Okay, so let's do another example. So we've done the example of how this works if the electrical potential that you desire the intracellular compartment to have is lower than the electrical potential that it actually has. Now let's do the example where the electrical potential that the intracellular compartment actually has is more negative than the electrical potential you want it to have. Okay, so let's say the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment is negative 90 millivolts. Okay, so again, we're assuming that the electrical potential of the extracellular compartment is still zero millivolts. So that means that the electrical potential of this wire here is the same as the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment, i.e. negative 90, rather. Okay, now, when we put it through this electrical differential amplifier here, uh, then the electrical potential of this wire coming out is going to be two times the desired electrical potential of the intracellular compartment, which is negative 140 millivolts, and then subtract off the electrical potential of this input wire here, which is negative 90. And then overall, that gives you an electrical potential of this wire, this output wire, as negative 50 millivolts. So this wire here is going to have electrical potential negative 50 millivolts. Now, we know that the electrical potential of the axoplasm is negative 90 millivolts. So this one is substantially more positive than this one. This time, what's going to happen is that the negative ions within the uh, axoplasm, for instance, chloride anions, are going to migrate towards that electrode, and they're going to give up their electrons to the electrode. So it's going to work the opposite way, basically. So what's going to happen is you're going to give up electrons to this electrode, like so. And uh, that means that you'll be taking negative charge out of the axoplasm, so the electrical potential of the axoplasm will become less negative, it will become more positive, i.e. it will go up towards negative 70 millivolts, this desired electrical potential. And as you approach negative 70 millivolts, what will happen is that the electrical potential of this wire will also approach negative 70 millivolts, because as this approaches negative 70 millivolts, as you can see, the electrical potential of this wire is also going to approach negative 70 millivolts. So, what's going to happen is that you will converge on an equilibrium, basically, as the electrical potential uh, of this intracellular compartment converges on negative 70 millivolts. So that is how this piece of apparatus works uh, to maintain a constant electrical potential uh, difference across this membrane. Now, we've basically simplified it by just assuming that the electrical potential of the extracellular compartment is zero millivolts or volts. Um, that simplifies it because it means that this electrical potential of this wire here is just the same as the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment. This setup works and still does the same thing if uh, the electrical potential of the extracellular compartment is different, basically. But it's more convenient just to think of it as being set to Earth, basically, uh, i.e. zero. Right. So now let's see how we can use this uh, system to uh, measure the current that is moving through, let's say, voltage-gated sodium channels and coming into our squid giant axon. Okay, um, do I actually, do I want to use the same picture? Yes, let's use the same picture. Right, so let's say we have triggered an action potential in our, uh, in our neuron, and we now want to measure this current of sodium coming through these channels. Well, basically, if sodium is coming in from the extracellular compartment to the intracellular compartment, then what will be happening is the extracellular compartment will becoming, be becoming more negative, and the intracellular compartment will be becoming more positive. So the electrical potential difference across this membrane will uh, be changing, basically. Now, this apparatus is designed to maintain uh, a constant electrical potential difference across the membrane. Now, in this case, what you would do is you would replace this electrical potential of the desired intracellular compartment with your desired electrical potential difference from extracellular to intracellular. So this is your desired electrical potential difference, and you'd still need that two there. Okay, so you'd replace that with, um, with this because you are... Um, you have to now face the prospect that um, the electrical potential of the extracellular compartment is not going to remain uh, zero volts, basically.